Uh, this video will go through yet another example in which we are um, looking at how to deal with uh, determining the shear capacity for a beam um, based upon uh, NZS3404, the structural steel design standard in New Zealand. So as you can see from the, um, the example here, we have a uh, rather short uh, beam with really high load, so we've got 40 kilonewton, two 40 kilonewton point loads, so you've got about approximately um, 80 tons over this uh, meter and a half uh, long beam. Um, and so I, before we approach this problem, it's always good to just sort of have uh, a bit of a, um, uh, a think and, and about what we would expect uh, the problem to be. So we would expect that you know, for such a short beam uh, with really high loads, we would expect really large shear demands coming out of this. Um, and so we'll, as we are uh, selecting the beam and we're designing it, uh, we shouldn't be surprised if we see um, high shear uh, demands relative to the, um, the bending capacity. And in fact, uh, given the uh, size of the demand and the length of the span being so short, we'd actually expect uh, shear to, to be driving um, a, a fair amount of the design here. Um, a couple other things from the brief is uh, that we are to use grade 350 steel, um, and that these loads are already factored, so they've already gone through their load combination and their load uh, factor, so we don't have to do anything to those, uh, and that a composite slab is used, and so um, that's going to tell us that we have uh, full lateral restraint over the entire length of the section uh, of the member sorry And with this full lateral restraint, we would then expect that um, lateral torsional buckling would not be an issue. Uh, lateral torsional buckling probably wouldn't be a huge issue for uh, this element anyways, just given how short the span is. But, um, you know, it, it could be depending upon how deep the section goes. But uh, for this problem, we can uh, effectively ignore it uh, because with that composite slab, uh, restrains the critical flange, which is the one in compression, so that's the top flange in this case, um, over the entire length. So, in getting started, uh, the first thing we need to do is determine what our uh, sort of design demands are uh, on this beam. So, we need to determine uh, M star um, and V star. So our moment demand and our shear demand. So uh, the way that we do that is um, just simply uh, through some statics. Uh, so we'd have a, we'll draw ourselves a quick free body diagram. Um, bring that over so we have a nice symmetric drawing here. Um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So if we have uh, 400 kilonewtons um, applied, uh, because it's a simply supported beam, everything's nice and symmetric. Um, we're going to have uh, 400 kilonewton uh, reactions. And so if we draw our um, uh, shear force diagram, so because we've got point loads, we'd expect a, a constant shear and then we've got no shear here in the middle
and the maximum value of that shear is 400 kilonewtons. 400 kilonewtons. So V star equals 400 kilonewtons. So uh, nice and straightforward. Let's just look at what our moment demand is as well. So uh, draw our bending moment diagram here. Um, where we will have uh, some uh, linearly changing moment and then we've got a constant moment across the middle because we have uh, zero shear and that's just going to be um, this force times that distance so we're going to have 200 kilonewton meters um, is our maximum moment and so m star equals 200 kilonewton meters. All right, the, uh, the first step we need to do is um, size the member for flexor, and then we check shear. So that's, that's sort of our design procedure. Um, And of course, the governing equations that we have to contend with, this M star has to be uh, less than or equal to our strength reduction factor phi times our section capacity. Um, and has to be less than or equal to phi times MBX. Um, because we have this uh, composite metal deck and we've got full lateral restraint, um, MBX equals MSX due to, uh, we'll just abbreviate full lateral restraint to FLR. Uh, and then, you know, we'll keep a reference column over here on the, uh, the right hand margin just for code equations. Uh, so just out of, um, you know, for your reference, um, this is coming out as an S3404 5.1 dot one all right so um you know because we've got full lateral restraint we only need to check the section capacity um and uh phi m's of s let's just write that down so that's just going to be um m star uh, has to be less than or equal to 0 0.9 times fy times our effective section modulus. Um, so if it's, a, if it's a compact section, this is the plastic section modulus. Um, if it is a, um, a non-compact, it will be something uh, smaller than that. So uh, let's work out what this sort of required section modulus is first. So uh, we can do that by uh, placing in uh, this 200 kilonewton meters into our M star. Um, and because we're going to use a grade 350, um, and because uh, based upon the thickness of the material, we, uh, we get a slightly different yield strength. So thicker materials are slightly uh, lower uh, yield strength than um, are, are thicker. So let's be conservative with this one. For a grade 350, let's use a 340 MPA um, yield strength. Um, of the flanges, just basically assuming that we would have um, these great big flanges, you know, kind of, because we have a relatively large uh, bending moment design uh, uh, demand on this one. So let's just assume uh, 340 MPA, and obviously what we will do is we will go through and we will check and we will update our section capacity based upon uh, what the actual yield stress of the section we choose um, is. And then, so we'll do Z effective required. Um, if we rearrange that, we get um, 200 uh, times uh, 1,000 squared to get us into newtons and millimeters uh, divided by uh, 0 0.9 
times 340 and all of that gives us a an effective section modulus which is required equal to um, 654,000 millimeters to the third. So what we need to do is go to our section capacity tables and um, and see if we can find something which is going to be uh, a, a little bit larger uh, than that. So if we uh, go to these section capacity tables um, for our universal beams um, and if we we look here at the um, so again we're using grade 350 so we'll be in this set of columns and we can just look at our effective section modulus over here and we need one that is greater than 654,000 um, uh, millimeters to the third so we look um, the well, we've got one which is about 729 and one which is about 629 um, so the 629 is actually quite close um, and then we see a few things that well you know we had assumed a uh, flange yield stress of 340 well this one's 360 so um, let's let's actually just try uh, selecting that one um, and uh, we can um, and, and I'll, I'll show you just a, a nice little design trick uh, that we can use to um, as we're selecting to just to keep help keep our our designs a little bit more uh, efficient and so if um, set effective required uh, equals 600 and 54,000. So we're going to try a 310 UB 40.4, which has a an effective section modulus of 629,000. So, I mean, the first thing that should jump out, he's like, well, why are we trying, you know, we, we need this size. Why are we trying something this small? Um, so, uh, let's just have a look at what the percentage difference is between these two. So, if we did um, 654,000 minus 629,000 and divide all of that by 654, um, we get 3.8% difference. So it's really, really close. Um, we have, yeah, nearly the, the same, same capacity out of here. And then if you factor in that the, the, the yield stress of the, of the flanges for this, uh, 310 UB, um, happens to be uh, 360 MPA, and our required was calculated based upon an assumed 340 MPA, uh, well, then we're probably, you know, going to be just fine. So uh, let, let's try that out. Let's just work out what uh, the actual uh, section capacity um, is going to be. So um, phi MSX... Uh, equals 0 0.9 uh, times 360 MPA for the, the actual yield stress of the flange um, times 629,000 um, and then we'll divide all of that by 1,000 squared um, if we work out the uh, the math on that, we get phi m's of x um, equals 204 kilonewton meters. Um, m star again equals 200 kilonewton meters, which is less than phi m's of x. 
So it's okay for flexure. All right, well, that's step one. And again, you know, this is uh, hopefully was, um, uh, you know, enlightening to see that we don't have to just blindly, you know, check these these numbers for the section size. So we can get, um, when we're designing, you know, it's, it's important to, to think about the problem and find and see, you know, what assumptions do we have going in and uh, will we still have a, a safe design? So now that we've um, selected a section based upon the flexural capacity, uh, we need to check the shear demand. So, um, and then with the shear demand, uh, our governing equation V star is less than or equal to phi V sub V. And again, we'll just keep our uh, reference column over here uh, that's coming just straight out of NZS 3404 uh, section 5.11.1.1 so when when determining you know the shear stress we really have uh, two things that we need to look at we need to determine what our shear stress distribution is so whether it is uh, a uniform shear stress distribution or if it is a um, non-uniform. Um, and then we also need to see uh, whether the web is going to buckle under, um, uh, whether it will, will buckle before reaching a full plastic section. So um, if we just go back to the uh, design standard, if we look at the section which is dealing with shear, so, you know, to determine if we've got a uniform shear stress distribution, um, we really see if we fall into one of these categories. And we do. So it's this category A here, which is the web of an eye section, which is loaded uh, parallel to the direction of the flange. So um, if that's the case, and this is a, that's a uniform section, a uniform shear stress distribution, and this is just coming straight out of sort of uh, the shear flow um, from you know mechanics and materials. So if you if you don't know where this comes from, uh, you just go back and, and review um, sort of your mechanics and materials, and and that will be enlightening. Um, if you do feel comfortable with that uh, where you know that shear flow and shear distribution, this should make a lot of sense to you. So now that we know that we've got working with a uniform shear stress distribution, uh, we need to determine whether our section is going to uh, buckle or whether it will be able to reach uh, plasticity over the entire depth of that section. So um, we'll just write down here uh, uniform shear stress distribution in the web and that's 5.11.2.1a so that's just the uh, the provision that we just looked at um, so now we need to check the slenderness ratio So uh, the slenderness ratio, again, if we just go right back to the code, um, we want to see uh, what this uh, ratio of d sub p, so for an I section, d sub p is uh, equal to d1, which is just the clear distance between the flange, um, divided by the thickness of the flange. Uh, see if this slenderness ratio is less than or equal to 82 divided by the yield stress of the flange over 250. And again, this 250 is here uh, because when these uh, slenderness ratios were developed, uh, grade 250 steel was the most common. So uh, let's just sort of uh, work through uh, that based upon our um, what's coming from our steel tables. So um, if we 
kick back to our steel table, um, we need to find out what this um, uh, section capacity is here. So if we look at our steel table, what's uh, helpful is that we actually have this D1 over T sub W uh, already calculated for us. So we can just lift it straight out of the table. So we're using a, um, a 310UB 40.4. So we come down to 40.4, a 310UB uh, D1 over T sub W equals 46.5. So... Um, D1 over T sub W uh, equals 46.5. And this is just, you know, again, from steel property tables. Um, now we need to see if, if this slenderness ratio is going to be uh, less than that uh, that limit in the uh, in the standard. So 46.5. Find out if uh, we look at 82 over Fy 250, um, and that equals 82 over uh, 360 MPa over 250. Um, and that equals uh, 68.3. So um, 46.5 46 uh, is indeed uh, less than 68.3. And so uh, we have a stocky web. Um, that's good. So now uh, we, we know that we have a uniform shear stress distribution and we have a stocky web. So we just need to determine um, what equation do we use uh, for our shear capacity. And uh, then if, uh, if we just go straight back um, to our, uh, our shear standards, um, we have if... Uh, if we're a stocky web, we use uh, V sub W, and V sub W uh, we can find um, just down here. So for a flat plate, uh, which is what our web is, V sub W is just uh, the area of the web uh, times 0 0.6 times the yield strength of the, um, of the web. And the 0 0.6 times Fy uh, just comes straight out of the von Mies failure criterion for uh, maximum shear stress. Um, so uh, if we come back to our calculations, just working out um, that equation, uh, we're going to get V sub V equals V sub W equals 0 0.6 times Fy times 8 sub W and that's from 5.11.4.1. And so plugging in our, our values, um, we'll get 0 0.6 times 360 MPa uh, times 284 is D1 of the section. Uh, and then its thickness is 6.1 millimeters, and then we'll divide by 1,000 newtons per kilonewtons just to get us working in kilonewtons. And so we get um, V sub V equals 374 kilonewtons. Well, now we need to compare it back to our V star. So if we go back to our uh, first page in our calculations, we see, ooh, our V star is actually quite large. It's 400 kilonewtons. So, um, and then if we were to uh, multiply this by a five factor, you know, we'd have uh, V star equal 400 kilonewtons. Well, that's going to be greater than um, phi V sub V equal 0 0.9 times 374 um, 
identify v sub v equals 337 kilonewtons. So um, that's no good. Uh, this means that, you know, while the member was just fine for our flexural capacity, because it's got that high load and this really short span, um, it, 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 it's not going to be able to take the shear demand. So we need to go up uh, and find a, uh, find a larger section. Um, and, you know, we essentially, um, because, you know, if we're in this stocky uniform, it's the... Uh, criteria it's this area of web is really the only thing that we have that we can um, uh, we can work with so you know we need so we need more web area so one way to do that is to we could put on doubler plates on the web but that's expensive um, that's a lot of welding involved. Um, that's only really what we'd use if we were really uh, constrained with the depth of the section. The easier way to do it is just to get a deeper section. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look up and um, try to find a, uh, another size. So um, if, we, uh, if we go um, back to our uh, steel tables. So we were at this 310, um, 40.4. Well, if we want to go up um, in our web area, uh, well, you can see that the, the depth of the next section size up is not a lot deeper, and it's a similar size web thickness. So, um, you know, we're fairly close, 337 to 400. What if we kick up just to the next uh, depth of section, to this 360 by 44.7, where... Um, we have a, a depth of 352, um, and um, we have a, uh, a thickness of um, 6.9 millimeters. And then if we also look, our D1 over T sub W uh, is 48.2. That's still below that uh, 82 over FY. Uh, square root of fy over 250 limit, which um, was 68.3 um, from our, our calculations. So if we uh, kick back to those calculations there, uh, you know, this limit here for, for the same size, same thickness uh, material, again, that's our stocky web limit. So um, because of that, I, I think we're, we're going to be just fine doing this um, uh, f yeah, sort of larger uh, capacity here. So uh, let's try that. So we're, we're going to look at this. So we're going to go try a 360 UB 44.7. Um, D1 equals uh, 300 and um, 33 millimeters. And it has a um, thickness, T sub W, equal to uh, 6.9 millimeters. Um, again, we, we saw that it was a uh, stocky web uh, with uniform shear stress. So um, uh, that means that we can just use the, the same V sub W equation. And in fact, what you'll see is all universal beams will have um, stocky webs. And it's really for this reason um, in, in order to make sure that we don't get shear buckling um, and we can take advantage of the full plastic section um, in shear. Um, so if that's the case, then we have you know, V sub V 
equals v sub w equals 0 0.6 uh, times the yield stress of the web uh, times the area of the web um, and that's just going to equal 0 0.6 uh, times 360 MPA uh, times 333 times 6.9. Uh, we'll divide that by a thousand just to go from newtons into kilonewtons. Um, and then we get V sub W equals 496 kilonewtons. Um, so let's check that, you know, V star uh, equals 400 kilonewtons. Um, is that less than or equal to phi V sub V equal to 0 0.9 times 496? Um, and we find out that, again, 400 is less than um, 446 kilonewtons. Okay, for shear. Now we have only one more thing to check, and that is the uh, moment shear interaction. And so uh, this only comes into play when we have really, really large um, uh, sort of shear. Uh, actually, when we have really, really large shear and uh, bending. Uh, demand. So uh, again, if we just kick over to the um, to the standard here, so interaction between shear and bending moment is all in section uh, 5.12. Uh, what we find is that um, if our moment demand is less than 75% of our uh, uh, bending section capacity, uh, we essentially have no interaction for, for shear. We, we take this visa VM uh, equal to V sub V, which is what we've already calculated. Um, but if we um, are larger uh, than um, 75%, if our moment demand is larger than 75% of our section capacity, well, then we need to take some reduction uh, here. And uh, this is essentially accounting for the fact that, you know, if you've got uh, shear, you're going to have both transverse and longitudinal shear. Uh, that's going to add to the uh, the normal stresses uh, created by bending, and it will. And if you think about it from sort of a, a more circle or a principal stresses point of view, uh, and a failure criterion point of view, you're going to get to yield uh, a lot quicker. So this makes sense, and it, it makes sense that it only happens when we have a really really large uh, bending moment demands. So um, first thing we need to do is determine you know where do we sit uh, in this ratio of basically m star. And then if we take this phi m's of s uh, and we, uh, we bring it to the other side, so it's this ratio of the demand over the capacity. Um, if we're less than or equal to se uh, 75, uh, then you know, we don't have to do anything. If we're greater than, uh, then we just need to work through and use uh, this equation here as our reduction factor for our shear capacity. So um, we'll just come here and say check. M, V, interaction, so three sixty UB forty four point seven uh, Phi MS equals zero point nine times 360 times 729 times 10 to the third divide by 1,000 squared. And again, all of those numbers are just simply coming from um, the uh, design uh, tables where, you know, we can look up for a, uh, a 360 UB 44.7 uh, the, the effective section modulus is 762, 
um, and the uh, yield stress in the flanges are 360. So um, if we work out what that section capacity is, we have phi ms equals 246 kilonewton meters. <clears throat> and so let's look at our ratio of um, m star over phi ms. Um, that's going to be uh, our m star was 200 uh, kilonewton meters. And again, that's just coming straight off that front page. Um, and our phi ms is 246 kilonewton meters. Well, that ratio equals 0 0.81, which is greater than 0 0.75. And so we need to account for um, mv. Or just interaction. Um, so, uh, again, if we just sort of keep a, a reference column up here um, and we look at NZS 3404 uh, in section um, 5.12.2, uh, really all we need to do then is say that, you know, V sub V sub VM equals V sub V times 2.2 uh, minus 1.6 M star over phi MS. And then again, that's just coming straight um, uh, out of this uh, capacity here. So that's just coming right out of that one. Um, all right, well, let's just plug and chug and see if we still have enough shear capacity uh, now that we're having to uh, check this, um, you know, MV interaction. So uh, putting in our capacity, so V sub V is 446. Um, and that's going to be 2.2 .2 minus 1.6 times 200 divided by 246, and we get V sub VM equals 401 kilonewtons, which is greater than V star equal to 400 kilonewtons. So that's okay. And that means that we can then go ahead and use a 360 UB 44.7. All right, so that's, uh, that, that's, you know, not an overly um, uh, challenging uh, example there, and sort of just sort of should, you know, it should be fairly straightforward, kind of walk you through, um, and again, as I say that, you know, our, our shear is really only going to dominate when we have the combination of really high loads and really short spans. Um, but even if we have that, we know that shear is going to dominate. What we do is we uh, we still uh, size the member for flexure, uh, go through, uh, you know, check our shear uh, capacity, shear demand uh, with the shear, make sure that we have, you know, uh, what our shear stress distribution is, whether it's uniform or non-uniform, and whether it's a stocky or a slender member uh, for uh, universal beams, so UBs. Uh, sold in uh, New Zealand, all the webs are going to be uh, stocky and uniform uh, so that then we can take advantage of this V sub W, which is just, um, this here is just the, uh, uh, you know, tau at yield, our, uh, our shear stress from von Mies uh, failure criterion and the area of the web. And then um, once we have that, if we have uh, this really large ratio between our um, moment demand and our uh, moment section capacity, and if it's over 75%, 
um, then we need to account for this uh, moment and shear interaction. So we'll wrap up there, and um, thank you very much.